The Federal Hate Crimes Prevention Act punishes crimes motivated by the victim's protected trait, such as religion or sexuality. But what if other motives, unrelated to the victim's protected trait, played a bigger role in causing the defendant's conduct? Is it still a hate crime? In other words, must the victim's trait be the but-for cause of the defendant's conduct, or just a substantial factor? That was the question before the court in United States v. Miller. Samuel Mullet, the leader of the Burkholz Amish community, excommunicated several members, including the mothers and fathers-in-law of his two daughters. The excommunication led to disputes among family members. One of Mullet's daughters lost custody of her children after her husband divorced her and fled with his excommunicated parents. The other daughter's husband refused his parents' request to leave Burkholz with them. Eventually, Amish leaders from other communities voted to reverse Mullet's excommunications. Several years later, in five separate incidents, 16 Burkholz members attacked nine people from other Amish communities by cutting the men's beards and the women's hair. All the victims had personal connections to Burkholz and participated in reversing the excommunications. The United States government indicted the 16 attackers for violating the Hate Crimes Prevention Act. At trial, the attackers presented considerable evidence that each attack was motivated by an interpersonal or intrafamilial conflict. The court instructed the jury that the motive element of the hate crime statute was satisfied if the victim's religion was a significant factor for the attacks, even if the defendants had other reasons for the attacks. The jury convicted all the defendants. They appealed to the Sixth Circuit, arguing that the hate crime statute required proof that the victim's religion was a but-for cause of the attacks, not a significant factor.